talking bluegrass. I'm glad you're here. Um, hopefully you're here because you just want to be the best guitar player you can be. Uh, and some of you guys are here just because you love bluegrass. Either way, I'm fine with it. When I take on a new student when I was doing one-on-one -on -one lessons, I would ask a question. Do you want to be the best guitar player you can be? Or do you just want to be better at playing what you've been playing? Either way, I can help you. But if they choose, I want to be the best guitar player I can possibly be, we're going to do bluegrass. Because bluegrass puts your playing under a microscope. What it does is it strips away everything that you have to hide behind. And it's just you, a pick, and a guitar, and you're naked. So that's what I mean by putting a microscope on your plan. There's no reverb, there's no delay, there's no overdrive or distortion, there's nothing to hide behind. It's just you. And if you play clean, you're going to know that. And if you don't, you're going to know that too. So a few little tips and techniques that I'm going to give you right out the gate in this video before you jump out into the deep end with all the bluegrass tunes is pick. Your right hand is the most important part of bluegrass music, in my personal opinion. Because a lot of people, if you've been playing for a long time, you've developed habits. And a lot of times, when people try to play faster, they'll take their pick and angle it just a little bit like this because it comes off the string quicker and easier less resistance and you can be faster however you can hear that hear that little scrape in there and that soft attack when you have a lot of distortion on that that'll add your attack for you but when you come over here it's all gone right you can just hear this right but here if we turn our pick parallel with the string and the pluck goes perpendicular perfectly, hear the difference in that versus this? It's very obvious, right? So that is key number one. And for people who've been playing for a long time, it's going to stink. It really is. It's going to stink trying to redo that whole thing because everything's going to change. Um, but you're used to strumming like that. I guarantee you don't strum like this. You strum like that. So... It just gives you that attack. And that's what you need. You need attack in order for it to be super clean. And that's what we're going for here. Super duper clean playing. Fast smooth clean right that's our goal that's my goal i hope it's your goal too okay now there is the uh scale study already uploaded hopefully you've already done that if you haven't go check that out because that's a gift that keeps on giving for the rest of your life uh, i still play it to this day nearly every single time i pick up the guitar and uh when you're doing that that's the best time running scales and scale studies, whatever you want, what have you. That's the best time to concentrate on your right hand and how your pick is looking. That's a good one. G scale is good to go all the way across the guitar and strings. If you're really just starting out, the shorter scale is probably better. So a C scale. To be able to mindlessly do your left hand, right? You've done this so many times that you can talk like I have, except for I missed that string. <laughs> anyway, so what I want you to, the point of it is to do your left hand to be something that's just mindless, so you don't have to pay attention to it, right? So you can really concentrate on the right hand while the left hand's still going good. Because we have to have them in sync, which is kind of the point of the scale study. That's, that's the purpose of that for me. That's why I still do it. It wakes everybody up and puts everybody on the same page. Meaning everybody left hand, right hand. R left hand, right hand. You know what I mean. Okay. So, uh, left hand is all the same technique that you should have been doing forever. Is, you know, making sure that your thumb stays on the back side of the neck and not all over like this. Which some of us do for reaching around and getting chords like that 
but when you're really picking, you want your thumb, to, you can still peek over the top like you see mine doing, but you want it, you want it on the back side, the back top end. That's gonna give you the most leverage to pull from, and it gives you enough room for your fingers to be really up top, right? And you can play right on the finger pads. I'm trying to make me a nice little, uh, hopefully you can see those there. Those are the indentions on my fingers. Um, that's where I want you to use your fingers to play. You don't want them laying down like this, like a C9 chord, right? You want them up, out of the way, and just de -de -de -de, where they can dance like a, like a brown recluse spider. You know what I'm saying? All right, so we got that, we got that. Placement of this hand. Um, you're gonna wanna stay right at the back side of the sound hole. That's where you can get the most sound, tone, loudness, and the tension here stays pretty steady. You don't want it back here, it really thins out. See? Which can be handy in certain situations if you want to make that sound. But as a general rule, we want to stay kind of up here. That's where it's loudest and it's best, and we're loud and best when we do bluegrass. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, um, let's get after it. What do you say? Let's get into some bluegrass. Here we go. <laughs> 